Greetings, Paul. Hey, Claire, how are you doing? Here we are again. Here we are. Here we are. How are you? I'm good. And, and Paris, make, Paris is so much nicer than London this time of the year. It's a lot more glamorous. I know. Yeah, it is. And, and better paid. I'm better paid. <laughs> so how, yeah. how have you been doing? Yeah, really good. Really good. Um, I'm uh, excited about this session. As you should be. As you should be. Highlight of, highlight of the conference for me, Paul. I, I, I'm hoping Nicola and Murad uh, joins us in the session because... Otherwise, they'll have to listen to us. <laughs> they're, they're, they're the stars of the show. Absolutely. Yeah. By the time the session's over, I'm going to go and buy a Renault. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, um, uh, it's going to be good. Uh, I, I did just send you a text. I was sorry not to meet you in the green room, but the previous session I was in, it ran for the full 50 minutes. Oh, so, really? Okay. Yeah, That's we good. had. Um, we had lots of questions, um, lots of people listening in. That's uh, fantastic. So, um, That's what it's all about. It's, uh, yeah, um, I'm uh, uh, quietly confident <laughs> that we'll get uh, get a good audience. We had a good, um, uh, certainly lots of great questions for the other Google session, Google Roundtable yesterday. Fantastic. Oh, David Forer, was it? Yeah, David and... Um, David, uh, David knows his onions. <laughs> he certainly knows his onions and um, Thomas... Uh, uh, Spiegel from L'Oreal, uh, who's a group chief architect. Yeah. With just fantastic insights and uh, um, really, uh, really interesting um, and open um, sharing on on some of the great stuff they've been doing and, and how yeah. they've been on the journey. I think just a really nice case study from a different industry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like this will be as well. Yeah. So according, there's uh, Murad, he probably hey, should... Uh, he's on he's on the in the chat i can see that uh, he just needs to join his i just need to share his screen yeah i think i saw nicola coming to the session too yes i did as well um so uh, uh, i will um uh, i won't start before um half past if that's okay with you sure, because yeah. no no worries at all um, uh, with you know four other tracks um, going on, uh, it's always worth giving people time. Yeah. To finish the previous sessions. Maybe uh, if they're doing more than clicking a tab and trying to take a, get a glass of water, or a cup of coffee, or something. It, it, it's it's like the physical conferences. It's it's a foolish presenter that doesn't give five minutes for people to get coffee. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. The old one function break. Yeah. You can we used to say check one phone call, you know, check one email, <laughs> make one phone call. Make one visit to the, uh, the bathroom, get a coffee. No more time than one function. That, that, that's the real loss, though, in terms of physical conferences that I historically have found the most interesting conversations are in the corridor where you yeah. can have a one to one with somebody. And, you know, for all the talk of video calls of the future, there's definitely something lost in, in not being in the same building. Hello. Hey, Murad, there you are. How are you? Welcome, Hi, Murad. Hi, Claire. Hi again, Paul. So we're okay. waiting for Nicola. Waiting for Nicola. Just to, to share the screen. Thank you, Claire, for the welcome. Oh, no, it's um, a delight to see you. I uh, didn't get a chance to catch you, you know, the 20 minutes yeah, ago. same for me. Um, same for me, thank you. That was good. So I'm um, waiting for Nicola. Maybe I'll, I'll call him. It's in uh, one minute. Am I right? Yeah, it's um, it'll it'll be one. As I was saying to Paul, we'll uh, we'll wait for people to join as well from um, if they've been coming yes. in from other Nicola? just after. Wait, are you not connected? No, it's not. Perfect. Sorry, Murad, I muted you, and I'm now just trying to unmute. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, can you hear me? There yeah. we go. 
Perfect. Okay, perfect. Nicolas has some issues to connect, but he will uh, he will come uh, later on. Uh, it's like me. It took about 30 to 60 seconds to activate the the audio and the video. Okay. 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 So if if I want Claire to share my uh, desktop to illustrate some metrics or whatever, uh, I can do that easily with the button on the bottom. Yes, think of it like Zoom or Teams. Um, you use the the bottom. Um, I would recommend uh, if it's a you know presentation that you just put it in the screen show you know uh, mm -hmm. format mm -hmm. and then it'll take a ball. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, you'll see that uh, most people will see that as the main part of the screen. Looks mm -hmm. like uh, Nicolas probably just joined us, and uh, um, fantastic to see a number of other people in. Uh, joining us for this round table. We'll just wait for Nicola to uh, come on board. Did you see Nicola well. somewhere? So, Paul, we, we have Paul Garibaldi, Garibaldi with us. Nice. No, I don't think Paul has been able to join us. It's just me, I'm afraid, Murat. Enter the session. I can see that on the, the right. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, um, uh, he's, he's joining in the people. I don't yeah, I, yeah. It's, it's what I meant. I mean, Ken Lane, we have uh, an esteemed audience. Fantastic. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. I'm quite sure Ken will. Uh, ask Nicola is coming. There's yes, Nicola now. Nicola. We, we thought you were in makeup, Nicola. Very complicated, but I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good, Nicola. Welcome, and uh, pretty much on time. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is Claire Barrett of APIs First Consulting, and I'm uh, delighted and honored this afternoon to uh, moderate this session brought to us kindly by Google, uh, one of the, the sponsors, uh, gold sponsors for this event. And uh, of course, the, the, the organization that allows us to make um, access to the API community more broadly. Uh, and this year, not just in Paris, but uh, all over the world. Murad, uh, are you able to see Claire or Paul uh, in video? Yeah, we are listening to you, Nicola. She's speaking. Okay, yes, yes <laughs> but, uh, I can't see video from uh, from Paul or Claire, but never mind. Okay. Oh, I think we, we can see you. Well, you. You might be missing something with Claire, Nicola, but you're not missing anything with me. <laughs> uh, do you have the audio, uh, Nicola? Yes, no problem with so the... the audio is uh, enough, I think. Okay, okay yes. You can go ahead, Claire, sorry. No, I think um, you've all introduced yourselves. <laughs> uh, Paul, you're uh, hosting this session on behalf of Google. Of, um, Google. You're head of business strategy, finance, and solutions in the Google, Google Cloud team. And uh, delighted to, uh, to have here as your special guest, uh, Murad Baba uh, at uh, Renault. You're uh, looking after governance from inside the data and architecture transversal direction. So it's described to exactly. us. Exactly. Fantastic. Thank welcome. You. And uh, Nicolas Dionnet, welcome to as uh, the API referent inside the API governance team. Fantastic to have you both here. And uh, um, we're delighted to have this opportunity to take um, any questions um, from the from the chat. Remember, this is a round table uh, as a, a, a conversational piece, as distinct from a presentation or case study per se. So, um, ah, Nicola can't hear people. All right. I think, yep, a reconnecting and coming back in would be great. So I, I might, um, Paul, pass to you um, and invite you to kick off proceedings. Uh, thank you very much, Claire. Um, it, it's fantastic to have uh, such expertise with us today from Renault. Um, we're definitely just the hosts and the facilitators, and Murad and Nicola are the stars of the show. Um, so I'm sure everyone here is, is, I'm sure we can add some small viewpoints uh, from a Google perspective of we're, we're very privileged in that we have a, a global business. Um, but this is API Days Paris and there's a, a growing, expanding community of, of API expertise in France. So in that context, uh, Claire, I'll take a back seat and, and let you try and draw out of these guys what they've achieved, um, what outcomes they've managed to generate with their API strategy and what general direction they're going. Yes, thank you, Paul. That'll, that'll be great. And uh, well, I might um, kick off uh, questions with um, uh, how much you think uh, you've had to put effort into um, upskilling your teams as you've been going through. Maybe you could give us a little context about the journey you've been going through, but particularly what it's meant for uh, new skills, new expertise that you've uh, needed to draw on 
um, to be able to realize uh, um, some of your API strategy coming to life? Good question. Uh, Nicola, would you like to all, would you like me to answer? I, I can. Uh, sorry, Morad, I can't hear okay. anybody. So, just to. Uh, so, uh, okay. I let you answer, so I can try question, to reconnect. Uh, sorry. Because um, it, it takes time to, uh, to train people to uh, make the upskilling, finally. Uh, run, we, within Renault Company, we started um, our API digital transformation about three years ago. Uh, so it's a long journey. Uh, we set up metrics since the very beginning to be sure that the transformation was happening in the right direction, of course. And so um, uh, we uh, measured, um, uh, we wanted to measure the benefits. And in terms of um, uh, benefits, in fact, we had to invest a lot at the beginning on an upskilling program to change the mindset of um, the people from the company in order to be more API, API first um, um, mindset. And uh, it took time. I think that it's about uh, after, let's say, one year uh, or uh, almost two years that we could have seen uh, a real transformation uh, that we could have, um, we could have, how can I say, um, uh, 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 have a new, um, uh, have seen in our metrics uh, a huge, um, a huge progress in terms of uh, deliveries. Um, so that's it. Uh, in terms of uh, a transformation uh, within our uh, co company, it is a huge and big company. So in fact, even if you uh, um, transform your IS, uh, you cannot only implement new APIs. Uh, you have, uh, how can I say, you have also to manage the migration of your um, consumer from old communication layers to new REST API in your ecosystem. So even if you transform your own IS, you have to manage the ecosystem. It could cost a lot also to revamp uh, your uh, legacy systems. Uh, because um, it is a run cost and uh, it is not always, you don't not always have the budget. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, um, um, I think that's, that's all, sorry, I'm not comfortable with the exercise. <laughs> so <laughs> it would be better for the next question. <laughs> Right. I mean, this is a fascinating um, space for uh, people, you know, to, it's a challenge that organizations going through these sorts yeah, of things. Yeah, even for us, it's not so natural. Yeah. Um, well, it, it, I, I, was very, I was very struck yesterday listening to Murad's breakout session and it, on the topic of upskilling, it, it wasn't just the effort they put into upskilling, but they had three pillars for their API adoption strategy. They had API management. And they had tooling and they had upskilling. So an equal exactly. pillar in terms of effort. Uh, and we have a vantage point in Google globally where we can see major complex corporations and Renault is a major complex corporation that's moving towards APIs. And in certain cases, they, they, they don't get the right balance between the tooling and the API management principles and the upskilling. So, so they go, and we have we kind of have a love hate relationship with use cases because use cases allow people to get started and figure out the technology and figure out the tooling and the general approach but but what's crucial here is to build a pipeline uh, of activity and knowledge inside the organization that's going to construct apis and in that context we see sometimes where not enough effort goes into upskilling and after about four or six months activity slows down sharply because the evangelism hasn't traveled right across the organization or enough resources and effort hasn't happened. So we, we were very struck looking at the Renault example that upskilling is an equal pillar because it's a key to scaling that, that you're building a platform and the whole organization is participating. So in that context, struck by the effort and struck by the equal weighting that upskilling is given with, with things like tooling. Thank you, and it's um, great to, to, for you to share a little bit more about uh, what upskilling uh, strategies and techniques you chose. What were uh, some of the things that, that had the most impact uh, that you yeah, saw? So, 
perhaps. So for us, uh, upskilling is uh, is a very important pillar. As uh, Paul explained, we have uh, several axes. The first one is the training. So we set up a, a huge amount of uh, e-learning trainings, uh, online session for our colleagues. Also, we have designed very specific trainings, uh, presential training. Um, those training has been designed by uh, what we call the API reference community. Nicola Dione is part of this community. In fact, within each uh, is IS business unit, we identify an API uh, reference in charge of spreading the good practices. And even uh, those guys are also in charge of setting up mm -hmm. dedicated uh, trainings. For, for example, we have uh, set up a design training in order to um, explain how to design a good uh, quality APIs. An API is not just a technical interface. It has a lot of things around um, the modelization of the data, the architecture, etc. And uh, this uh, training was very, very useful to help uh, the upskilling of ISIT and business people. Moreover, we also uh, had some uh, architecture town halls uh, dedicated to the API. At this kind of session, mm -hmm. it takes two to three hours. You have more than 500 people connected uh, and they learn a lot. They can ask questions, etc. And we have also webinars to help uh, our development teams to use our uh, stack of tools. Uh, and also we have some online videos to make all this mindset happening, mm -hmm. changing within the company. And you know, within Renault, uh, the top management and the developer, we are all convinced that our data is an asset. Uh, data has value. And how do we share it with a common communication layer, what we call the API management solution we took with a partnership with Google IPG. And this is, um, this is very important for us. So to change the mindset, to give the right uh, skills level to our uh, colleagues in order to have a good uh, production, uh, a good productivity uh, to open the data within the company and between our different business units and also to cross it transversely within the company. This uh, increases the value and for us the next step of the upskilling program is to go up to the, 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 the to increase the interaction with our ecosystem. This will be really wonderful for us. Uh, Murad, just to add some more, maybe uh, regarding the public. Uh, clearly, uh, the first uh, public we we want to to touch with our training were the, the developer community on one side, but we have also uh, product leaders, uh, product owners, uh, the agile business analysts that uh, were uh, in our mind, and uh, we also. Uh, uh, think about uh, managers and businesses because uh, uh, they need to to be uh, part of the transformation. And if technically we are uh, okay with APIs, they need also on business side to to have that in mind and to be uh, let's say uh, API compliant and uh, API first uh, thinking. Exactly. Yeah. So that's um. I'm taking, uh, breaking a few notes as we go, just to uh, um, uh, encourage the audience. So we have- Yeah, yeah, I can, we can read that. Fantastic. Um, Frédéric has uh, asked about, um, uh, from observation, that an API program often starts small with a, so, or with a small dedicated team dealing with everything. Uh, does upscaling mean that you need to start delegating to diverse entities to, to help um, broaden the, the exposure of APIs? Um, so how can you give people autonomy with the risk of, uh, um, you know, uh, managing, a, you know, a more um, pervasive view? So it's an age-old balance of how much do you control and how much do you federate and empower? Um, uh, in, in fact, uh, maybe I can take the, the answer, uh, Murad. Uh, I think... Uh, Basically, when we start uh, thinking about the, the training we can offer to our public, uh, the goal was to lower our work uh, for API referent, in fact. So as, a, as an API referent, I am, I, I am in charge of uh, uh, promoting the APIs in my business unit. 
to to in, ensure a consistency in the the API of my business unit. And the final goal is that, in fact, uh, whatever the business unit will provide the API, we should not see who, who has created it. It should be really consistent for our final customer. So uh, to to let us uh, to, to give us more time to to work on design and so on, we we start with promoting uh, an API design training. So uh, teams uh, should be uh, comfortable and uh, autonomous uh, uh, to to do that. Uh, basically, uh, it's, it's based on uh, canonical uh, uh, modelization. Uh, also, uh, probably, um, um, we, we we want them to be uh, uh, fully engaged in the, the the design of those API. So uh, we had more time to focus as an API referent of the the creating new trainings and uh, des uh, better designing our rules and promote uh, uh, the APIs in the whole company. So uh, we, we start with that uh, to just have more time to work on other things. Uh, and uh, those other things are clearly now, uh, we focus on a training dedicated to businesses. So a wider, uh, a wider range of people in the company. And potentially we have other things in mind, uh, uh, like uh, maybe uh, something dedicated really to how to consume API. So the all the, the security levels, security guidelines, uh, the API keys, the access token, and so on. So we have uh, many, many ideas uh, uh, on in mind, but no, no, not enough time uh, to do it uh, as quickly as we want. Fantastic. And uh, Muraz also given us an update on uh, the fact that you did do certification internally. Yeah, in, fa in, in fact, sorry, I, I, I wanted to, to, to answer to a keen lane uh, question. Yeah, in fact, we don't uh, do a specific certification on the training. Dur during our training, we have a really a very, uh, we practice with uh, a kind of uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, operational exercises to check that the understanding of the inputs are really well understood by uh, the trainings. But in fact, all the teams then uh, has the skills to consume or produce APIs. And what we set up something very specific, we think so within our company, it's a kind of quality rating of the uh, the APIs uh, based on a five-star quotation with uh, different axes. We, 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 we check the compliance with the security guidelines uh, of the API with uh, the security guidelines of uh, the company. We check also the, com the scalability of the API, the quality of the data, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it gives us a rating between uh, zero to five stars. And this is for us the way to monitor uh, the quality of the deliveries of the exposed API. Obviously, uh, for us, uh, an API that has more than three stars is an API that is available, uh, that is, has an enough quality to be consumed internally inside the business unit, but also to be exposed, to be consumed, uh, to, to be consumed by other business units of the companies or by external partners. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's very important, but we don't stop the production of APIs because at the beginning we wanted to break the silos, the data silos, and we wanted to have all the IS system, uh, we wanted them to share their data. And this at the beginning was a kind of uh, difficult, uh, we are in a big company, we need to change the mindset and um, to, to have it happen, it took, as I told you, one to two years, this transformation, and then it was accelerated because we, we obtain with the upskilling program the autonomy of the development teams, and then we can we can more focus on the quality than uh, than the volume of APIs because you have a basis that has enough APIs in within your company. So yeah. this is the, the topic for the quality. Some other question maybe. Um, I, question that um, I'd love to uh, um, explore is one that. Uh, uh, it, would, it would need more than 50, it probably need a three day conference in its own right, but <laughs> the whole question of funding. So certainly my experience, large organizations as they move from project-based funding um, and uh, uh, into more product-centric ideas. Uh, this question that came from Jan was about um, 
uh, uh, where's the API transformation budget getting d d decided and prioritized? Is this a um, API uh, business product owner um, a piece or is it from the IT side? Uh, any, anything that you'd be interested in sharing there would be would be great. And we've also got questions around quality. So um, from both Marwan and, and Jan. So, over so yeah, uh, Nicola, do you want to start with the quality? I will answer to the other question. Uh, the different, uh, you know, access yes, yes. ratings. So in fact, uh, for each uh, API that is produced and exposed on our system, uh, we are promoting them uh, using uh, what we call uh, so the API uh, five uh, five star quotation rating, and those are based, uh, in fact, uh, on uh, four axes with uh, for each axis uh, for uh, four levels. So we have. Uh, uh, let me maybe uh, have a look. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, the scalability, we have the security, we have the data, uh, the data confidentiality and the, the data quality. Uh, so in fact, for each step uh, of those axes, uh, we will uh, specify a, a level uh, of acceptance. And after that, we have a, a, a kind of a calculation to, to, to go through a final note on five stars. Do you see my screen, guys? Uh, no, we don't actually. So you just there's a little um, little icon at the bottom. Um, That's strange. Wait. The red. Now it should come. Just to um, to 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 give additional um, points on the quotation because the this topic seems to be uh, to interest a lot of people. So do you see now my screen? Yeah, yeah. We've got it. So, uh, so yeah. ju just to complete what Nicolas said, guys, as we said, uh, on the quality, we have four uh, major axes. In each axis, you have uh, uh, three or four levels of uh, uh, evaluation, of quotation. So we have the security. Obviously, we have to be compliant 100% to our company uh, security guidelines. Uh, no discussion about that. Uh, and we have also constraints around the RGPD and the consent management. So it is around this topic. We have the usability of the API and the consistency and the scalability. In the usability, you have, for example, the quality of the documentation. It seems to be a bit stupid, but uh, it is obvious that if you don't have a good naming rules and a good uh, documentation uh, of your APIs within our portal, uh, nobody will use it. Uh, outside uh, outside the, the the product team that uh, produce uh, this api so it's very important the usability the consistency uh, it's also a huge uh, an important criteria because in fact um, you know we need to speak the same language within uh, such a big company as Renault. so we have uh, different businesses manufacturing engineering sales after sales etc and uh, we define what we call a canonical information model. It is a kind of common language. We define the data sets uh, and uh, the dictionary associated, associated to all those data sets. And then mm -hmm. on top of that, we identified where are our single points of truth or our referential um, to have a 36, uh, a 360 degree vision of, on our data. And we, on top of each data, we try to measure very uh, concretely and deeply the quality of this data because you can share the data if the quality is bad your value will be very low so uh, uh, the consistency criteria is important because it measures your the compliance of uh, your api with this global language that is understandable by transversely all the businesses of renault so uh, in fact uh, nicola as an api referent of a business unit is leading uh, um, what we call an API Governance Board Committee. It is a, um, a meeting that, uh, uh, that has a frequency, a weekly frequency or monthly. It depends on the business unit and the level uh, number of uh, new uh, of, of, uh, new APIs produced. And within this uh, committee, we check before any exposition this rating, this face five star rating, and. Uh, so we check the compliance with the security guidelines, the design guidelines, the implementation rules, the documentation of the API. We check also, as I told you, the compliance with the canonical information model, 
the, we, the product and the API has, become, has, has to be also compliant to the architecture patterns. We check the quality of the API and the performance of the backend in order to bring the full satisfaction of our uh, consumers. So this, this was to give you really a, a deep overview of uh, what do we, um, what do, when we speak about the quality, what, what there is behind that. So the second question, Claire, can you remind it to me? It was uh, the uh, organization, maybe. Uh, in terms yeah, so of, we're going uh, to okay. so technology the um, discoverability portal one. So um, again, if we're going to continue on the quality theme, uh, there's two different questions around uh, where the information is made available for people. Um, is there uh, another? So this yeah, is yeah. also really something uh, uh, maybe I can answer uh, mm -hmm. where this data is available. In fact, um, we have a strong partnership with the Google uh, APG solution today. It is our REST API platform, our API management solution. But uh, as you know, we are an old company, so we still have uh, other kind of APIs. We have a, a data power platform uh, delivering uh, all the SOAP web services APIs. We are not really, uh, we want to decommission, uh, to make the decommissioning of this platform because uh, those old APIs that have more than five years, they are more in a point-to-point -point architecture. So they have very few consumer. Uh, often those APIs has been developed for one consumer. So we want to uh, avoid this, kind, this way of thinking because we need to, we want to increase the productivity. We develop one time with a good design, one REST API, and we want to maximize the number of consumers. So we have a unique portal on which it is called the service registry, on which you can have access to all um, the services available within our company. So uh, our REST APIs coming from our APG platform that are really increasing a lot. We will uh, maybe discuss later on on uh, uh, our metrics. Uh, we have also um, uh, our ESV services, APIs or web services. Uh, we have events because we have also a, a, an asynchronous communication layer that we implemented. We have uh, WebSub Google uh, events, we have uh, WabitMQ events, and we today we are trying to increase our events based on the Solace platform. So for all those services, we have a unique platform with the same five-star rating and with the same level of documentation. And anyone of our businesses or internal uh, colleagues from ISIT can have access to this catalog of services. And moreover, this platform is, not, is it just not a catalog. It makes, uh, when you expose an API in a technical environment, it makes automatically the provisioning of the infrastructure within the Google uh, APG platform, for example, or our uh, Solace uh, event platform. And so it's more than a simple um, catalog, it's a real platform to simplify the access, facilitate the access to everybody, and also uh, to know exactly who is consuming what. We can have the access of the list of consumers, of a dedicated API. We can monitor also the decommissioning of our old infrastructure as files transfer or as, as uh, data power uh, soap web services. So it's a whole world. We share everything internally within the company and within with our partners in order to increase the productivity of the development teams. I don't know if I answered to the question. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yes. They're, they're great in, insights. And, um, but we do want to get back to the, uh, the business transformation yes. question. Um, so this is, this is really a, uh, a sponsorship so, funding um, view and, and, and perhaps you know, what, what's changed and, and, and how do you measure this? I know uh, metrics are okay. something that so comes the, uh, For the transformation, uh, Nicola, you can complete if I forgot some topics, but for the transformation, it's very simple. Uh, when we created uh, three years ago, the API management, the API governance uh, strategy, uh, the top management uh, gives us uh, this responsibility. So we had the empowerment to do that. And since the beginning, we wanted to be totally transparent and set up metrics. So we said, we will decide the metrics right now, 
uh, to uh, to be very transparent and to monitor operationally operationally what's going on what's happening really so we set up metrics to measure the production of apis we set up metrics to measure the quality of the produced apis to measure the consumption to measure uh, the reuse rate uh, with a monthly base uh, etc etc uh, and so uh, we could see that the first year we were in a kind of upskilling uh, process so people were, were learning um, especially people from legacy system this new mindset with api first approach and then we could see uh, quickly a huge uh, improvement and maybe let me share a second time my screen because it's better to speak with data than words so if you see my screen i will be glad to show you very few metrics sorry but it's enough to illustrate uh, what we've done so do you see the screen yes yeah. so uh, in fact uh, you can see on the top left graph uh, it is the number of rest api we exposed on our production environment uh, that is our apg google platform uh, around the mid 2018 we had very few apis about 20 uh, it is uh, at this uh, time that we set up the API governance. And since then, we increased slowly with, um, uh, at mid 2019, it was a bit uh, hard to go deeper. And then uh, we realized that through the, the production of APIs and through the autonomy of all our development teams, that the production of APIs was increasing. And today we have more than 750 uh, APIs. So this means that we multiplied by 40 in less than three years, the number of REST APIs. So number of APIs, it is good, but it's not uh, the best uh, metric. Uh, this is just to show the production of development teams. In terms of reuse rate on the bottom left, you can see, I told you uh, uh, in orange, it is our old SOAP web service APIs that uh, were more in a point-to-point -point architecture point-to-point -point usage so with a very low reuse rate and it's what you can see on the graph we have the majority of our, of our old soap web service that has one consumer very few with two consumers and only six uh, services that has uh, uh, three consumers so for us uh, the reuse rate was very low and the average value was around 1.2 1.2 consumer per service on yellow, you can see the big difference with our new REST uh, design APIs. Uh, we have a lot of APIs that has three different consumers. Some of them has four consumers, five, and even more than 10 consumers. Um, some of them has uh, more than 10 consumers. And believe me, I can tell you that some APIs have has 100, 150 different uh, application consuming the service. So for us, uh, the average is around five to six consumers per uh, API developed and exposed on production. So for us, it's really a breakthrough in terms of uh, philosophy, in terms of mindset, and in terms of results. On the top right, if you see the graph, it, it just shows the number of calls. Uh, in on our, our APG Google platform, we started mid 2018 with about 500,000 calls per day, and today we reach more than 30,000 calls per day. Uh, sorry, 30 million calls per day on our platform, and it is not uh, increasing on a linear way, but it's more as a kind of exponential. Uh, you can see, by the way, on this graph, uh, you know, a kind of decrease. Uh, it is uh, the lockdown effect, the COVID-19 effect. But you can see that just after today, we are increasing our uh, consumption. This reveals that our consu uh, consumer, our businesses uh, understood uh, the powerful of our APIs and they are consuming a lot. And uh, this brings uh, value to our businesses. In terms of productivity, I told you that we measure it. So our development productivity has increased of about 22% because of APIs in average in all business units. And this comes from 
in fact, uh, a quotation that we do. It's a functional point quotation. Uh, we take uh, five to six new products developed in each business entity, and we see uh, exactly the percentage of productivity due to existing APIs that the product or project team has reused within its um, um, development. Of course, uh, we have productivity in terms of cost of development, but we have also time to market because when you implement a new product based on the reuse of existing services that has a, a good quality of data, you go faster, you deliver the value faster for your business. And that's it. In terms of metrics, we also measure the number of training, webinars, etc. And we had trained more than 2,000 people in about one year and a half. Um, and that's it for us. The next step will be to increase the interaction with our ecosystem and also to go up to the monetization and hopefully we are we, we cope with uh, the uh, apg we hope a lot from the uh, apg google platform that has these kind of features so it was just to illustrate some metrics of course we have also a lot of metrics about uh, the um, how can i say uh, the the operational performance the response times etc uh, to be sure that we have a, a good quality, level of quality uh, on production for our customers. So can, 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 I, can, I, can I just observe, Claire, yeah. that, that what we see globally is, is that there's much discussion around API management and what are the finest yeah. techniques and the finest engineering techniques. And I'm often asked as we travel, what, what's the key thing that makes the difference? And the key things that makes a difference is leadership. So when, when you listen to the Renault story, uh, Murad talks about how it's they're added three years, but they were given empowerment from top leadership. OK, so top leadership are senior enough to see they know it's not just about the number of APIs. They know it's not just about the productivity. They know it's not just about the simplification and reuse. It's a portfolio of outcomes. Uh, and Murad and Nicola, uh, are, are leaders who are driving this process and taking a balanced view. So, so when, when, when Murad talks about mindset, it's not, it's, it's more important almost to change belief systems rather than computer systems. Yeah. People, people starting to believe. So, so, so what I take what Murad says is three years in the process, but you hear how enthusiastic himself and Nicola are still, okay, about yeah. what they're doing. It is that it is leadership that makes the difference. It's leadership at the the top of the organization. And then this evangelism across the organization where, you know, people are people and they, they get two types of training. One type of training is somebody is ticking the box. You have to listen to this and it's just, you know, it's not going to really change the world. But you can tell they're evangelizing about how API products can really change and make people more productive and innovative. And that, that's what I think is fantastic. And sometimes we spend too much talking about the management techniques and not about the, the leadership techniques that are mm -hmm. taking place. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Paul, if I can add, you, yeah. you're totally right. At the beginning of this uh, transformation, when uh, we created this entity of uh, called API governance, this transversal organization, we had a strong support by the top management, our CIO yeah. and our businesses, because they were convinced that the API, the REST API was the right way to go. And that's why since the beginning, we set up metrics to be sure that we are going the right way and that we could um, could have, uh, how can I say, uh, to, we could improve the productivity of the global system. And another uh, key success factor was, uh, we didn't discuss a bit, a lot about it, but you know, um, an API governance goes with what we call a data governance. Uh, with our businesses, we created at the same time the data governance to define, I told you what was, the, what is a canonical information model to have a common language uh, around the data, to speak the same language and to share those data through services, through APIs. So this is also a key success factor. And we didn't uh, speak a lot about the tooling, but tooling is uh, 
very important. I spoke about what we call the um, uh, integration layer, the service registry on, 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 on which you can have access, uh, uh, 360 degree access to all the APIs of the company. But to have uh, a lot of other tools, for example, we have what we call an API quality improvement tool. You take any swagger of the company, you put it inside this tool, and automatically it, uh, it, it uh, supports all the guideline rules in terms of design, etc., and it tells you the must and the should things that you could uh, correct, fix uh, within your um, swagger, so within your API. So we have also two links to test, uh, to make stress tests of your APIs. Uh, we have a lot of uh, things around that. We have the dashboard. Uh, every, all those things, those three pillars based on the API management, so commonalized processes for to the, uh, on the whole life cycle process of the API. Uh, you have the tooling, you have the guidelines, and you have the upskilling. And all those things with the support of the top management brings the tr digital transformation of the company. Well, well, I think... Um, to me, this is a fantastic case study of um, exactly that. I often say that you, uh, a correctly executed API strategy creates a bow wave for broader transformation in the organization because the things that have to be true for successful APIs, you know, collaboration, uh, thinking differently, deep customer um, uh, penetration, solid engineering disciplines, um, tooling to, to execute that, metrics that evolve through your transformation as you learn more. You, you talked about, you know, the numbers of APIs becomes less relevant than the degree to which they're reused as an example of, yeah. of maturing, evolving, um, building all of the, you know, uh, small A agile philosophies, mindset practices that uh, and showcase for the rest of the organization. Um, what some of these are, I love this kind of data governance for you had to go hand in hand, um, but bringing that to life is, uh, cool. you know, case study but if you if, but if you look at the business outcomes claire where, where the guys are saying they can quantify reliably a 22 percent increase in productivity large corporations like renault probably have a couple of thousand people contributing to this type of exactly. innovation of business development so what is api what have apis done for, for if it's two thousand people they've added an extra 400 people well, it's in, also in, in, into the effort because of the 22 percent increase in productivity so with that, as we are working in a kind of uh, continuous work workload, or uh, in a cap we are working with a capacity team. So with that, a team is able to deliver more, yeah. more products with a, a better time to market, and this is very important for us. It's one of the major uh, result. It is a productivity increase, the reduction of the time to market. Uh, we we didn't speak about it, but you know, uh, as I told you. Five years ago, our global architecture of our uh, IS system, within Renault, you have more than 2,500 information systems. I don't know if you can imagine the links between all the systems. We had, uh, unfortunately, a lot of point-to-point uh, -point links with no reusability. And with this digital transformation, uh, you have better productivity, but you simplify your global um, IS architecture based on the communication layer based on REST API on APG Google platform. Mm -hmm. And so you have less and less uh, link point-to-point uh, -point links, but you have one provider that is giving the service to all the consumer that will connect to it. And it simplifies a lot uh, the architecture. So we have a lot of benefits. Yeah. Uh, and and, really. and th these type of numbers, we're starting to see chief executives mention their API programs on earnings calls. So they're talking to the equity analysts about the profit release for the quarter or for the half year. And we're starting to see CEOs of corporations talking about the number of API calls or how many different market segments are they seeing API development partners emerging from. And we're seeing equity analysts, stock market analysts starting to ask questions of C-level staff of what are they doing with APIs? So for, for the CEO of Renault, we have to say 22% increase in productivity. Like th these are the type of questions and answers that are going to start emerging in major corporations about the use of APIs. And increasingly, this the effectiveness of your API program is becoming something that investors are considering about your ability to 
you know, innovate quickly in the future and adjust quickly in the future. Exactly. So we have a, a kind of, um, um, let's say, confidential use cases with uh, external partners. We cannot, uh, we are not allowed to speak about it. But uh, anyway, uh, I can confirm you that the truth that with uh, those, uh, uh, with this API governance strategy today, we are able to address very new business use cases or very new, um, how can I say, kind of partnership very quickly. And uh, uh, it helps us a lot, really. It's fantastic. That's fantastic. Can you believe it? We are nearly at time. In fact, we've literally only got time for, um, uh, for, yeah. for Mora and Nicola to, to give us a quick wrap. Um, <laughs> hopefully, you can each just give us a couple of minutes of um, uh, headlines of, of, of uh, you know, what this transformation maybe has meant for you personally. Um, you've been in it, and, you know, to Paul's point, that you're still so enthusiastic and... Uh, um, and obviously continuing to make a great difference. We'd love to love to hear a, a couple of parting words and then I might invite Paul to, to close out for us. Nicola, you want to go first? I spoke uh, too much. <laughs> uh, for me, in fact, since uh, three years I work uh, on APIs for Renault, uh, it has been a, a very great travel for me uh, w uh, with the interaction with many, many people in the company uh, from uh, heterogeneous uh, uh, landscape, let's say, and uh, clearly uh, we have no time uh, to to how to say <laughs> uh, we have always new things to think about, uh, new new area to to go on, and clearly I think the the next step is uh, as Murad uh, previously said, the monetization. We are working on a developer portal. Hope uh, it will be the our uh, next step for this uh, this uh, new uh, 2021 year. For me, it was uh, uh, really uh, I, I I'm very enthusiastic because uh, you know when you are transforming such a big organization, uh, it gives you a motivation to do that. And uh, I'm, I, I I don't know personally, I like when uh, I arrived uh, when we train, uh, let's say, a legacy team. Um, it's not pessimistic, it's not, it's not negative, but uh, let's say legacy teams that were used to work in a kind of uh, old way, old design, and we introduce the API at the beginning, they are not really convinced. Uh, they don't want necessarily uh, to share their data, internal data, they don't see the benefits. Mm -hmm. And when uh, the mindset uh, change, the uh, API first mindset, uh, is totally understood and uh, we they implement APIs and when you discuss with them six months later be happy on the real result their system are more and more consumed every day um, and they are uh, they, they have more business so they are quite happy they can address very quickly a new kind of businesses without revamping all their backends so this is uh, wonderful and uh, we like to transform the the, the is system of the company could i um uh, just ask you perhaps um, i know a couple of people had some extra questions and maybe they could uh, um yeah yeah go how ahead can they uh, how else can they get in touch I'll link the sorry can um if people wanted to um still have some questions for you could they contact yeah, I have my LinkedIn uh, account. I don't know if they can have access to it. I, 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 I did it. I, I did it in my profile. The same for Nicola. Perfect. So they're, they're open for open for questions. For me, it will be a great pleasure to answer to questions uh, outside this uh, meeting. This has been absolute. And to share practice. And to share experience with everybody. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. The community will be very, very, very glad. Paul. Well, well, just to sum up, I just want to. Um, firstly, if people want to to come to the Google booth as part of the conference, that would be great. We'd be delighted to see them. Uh, thanks to to Murad and Nicola, and, and just to to echo what Murad's one of his key words leaving us was happy. Okay, because I'm a, I'm a firm believer. I spent many years sponsoring projects, and I think projects make people sad. Projects are temporary and unique management structures, and they dissolve and disappear when the scope is finished and the timetable is finished and the budget is finished. What Murad and Nicola are doing is they're building assets, reusable assets, modular assets, 
that make everyone more productive, go faster, uh, be innovative, give them business options. So I think the enthusiasm and the progress we heard here today is not very statistical, but is is we can draw a firm conclusion that projects make, make people sad and API products make people happy. We are happy. <laughs> Great. We are API. API. <laughs> happy API. Happy and happy day. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you so much, and uh, delight delight to see you. And thank you to Google for making uh, these sessions available okay. um, and this conference overall to okay. uh, the broader and, uh, community. And thank you for the okay. question of uh, the people with yes. us. Thank you very much. And thank you, Claire. I'm sorry for the beginning. It wasn't so easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, um, uh, fantastic. Really good. I'm sure everybody will. Thank love. You. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Nice rest. Bye-bye.